Hey everybody, I'm Mudslinger, and a few of you have requested uh, that I try and do a tutorial on uh, soldering um, brass tubing and flat bar and uh, whatever you want to solder together anyways. Um, I'll also going to be doing um, how to bend uh, brass as well, um, but I'll probably do that in a part two episode. So uh, let's get to see uh, what kind of tools you guys are going to need just to um, solder together uh, your basic brass stuff. Alright, so here we go. Obviously, you guys are going to need some brass. This is uh, 532 brass tubing. You can also get um, 1 8 by 1 8 uh, square tubing. Actually, you guys can get whatever you want. Um, the stuff I'm using is um, K&S engineering brass. Um, you usually find it at any of your local hobby stores. Um, with that said, you're going to need a pencil torch. Um, plumbing solder or uh, also what works uh, really well is um, um, regular solder that we use for um, soldering uh, wires together also you're going to need um, some uh, flux the stuff that I'm using is acid paste flux which is an SP30 um, I've read in some tutorials um, from the steam engine forum that um, there's a paste out there that um, is not as uh, non-acid and uh, they say it doesn't work quite as well as the acid flux does so I lucked out I had acid flux so anyways I haven't tried the other stuff but I'm just going by word of mouth and what other people have tried this stuff here works very well um, other stuff you're gonna need you're gonna need some uh, files um, there's a 1 8 round or round file uh, flat file and the one I use the most here is a half round file. I um, use this one here mostly for coping um, 532 rod or even 1/8 rod um, to fit over top of the uh, existing rod for a tight joint. Anyways, um, so let's uh, put this stuff aside here and uh, let's take a look at uh, what I've got kind of set up here. I've got one joint. set up this is 532 rod and as you can see here I've coped the end of it and on this end here I've also coped it at an angle so either way that's basically what you're going to want that the, the, the tighter that it is to the pipe um, the stronger it'll be and the nicer joint it'll uh, turn out to be. It's kind of hard to see, but you'll have to bear with me a bit. So let's uh, fire the torch up here. We'll put some uh, paste on there. And uh, oh yeah, one other thing too that we're going to need is some sandpaper. <clears throat> you want to sand the uh, joint uh, as best you can. And that way it'll, the, it's like paint. You'll have uh, the solder will have something to bite to as well. piece am I doing here? We'll just do a 90 degree joint here. Right. Okay. Now the other thing you're going to want to get um, is a piece of wood. Um, I like the wood a lot better. I mean, sure, it's going to burn, it's going to smoke a little bit, whatever. I can put nails in there to hold my pieces in place. And then usually just use a wrench or uh, whatever you've got that's got a little bit of weight to just uh, and hold the other piece into place. Um, the other pe uh, stuff that people are using is um, granite. It'll uh, take all kinds of temperature and uh, won't burn. So, where's my solder here? I thought I had everything all prepped and ready to go, but I guess not. I always like to step a little piece off, that way you can get, uh, you don't have this big bulky piece getting in the way of uh, your small pieces. So first things first, we're going to have to take some of this paste, your flux, 
wherever you want to put it. Just put it around your joint area that you want to weld. And then inside a bit and around. So just remember, wherever you put this paste is basically where uh, your solder is going to go. So then we'll just do that. And we'll take this and pop it up against. And that's basically what you're going to end up with. You're not going to need a lot of uh, heat, so just kind of heat it up a little bit. You see the paste melt, you see a little bit of smoke going too. Pull it away, you should be able to touch it. And then if it kind of pools up there, up top, just give it a little bit more heat. And it'll kind of just flood in to the actual joint. Um, let it cool down. And then that's pretty much it. Solder basically is working off a capillary reaction where it'll actually suck right into the joint. And then with that said, And there you go. Kind of hard to see. <clears throat> so that's basically as easy as it gets. I mean, this stuff's so nice to work with. The brass is so easy to manipulate, to bend, to file everything it just I've been on a bass bin brass binge for quite a while now because it just it's so nice to work with this is another joint that I did uh, a little while ago um, just make sure whatever you want solder to go make sure you put your flux in there and it'll just seep right into the joint and that's that it's a done deal okay here's another neat little uh, thing that I've learned with brass here Usually when you go one size up from one size that you've begun with, or a size down, it will slip inside the tube. Now this works really nice for when you want to join two pieces together. Um, what you really want to need to have though is a 90 degree shoulder here. That way when you actually take the two pieces and put them together, it'll be a completely tight joint all the way around. You won't see nothing. So with that there, we'll dip this here into the flux, slip her in, and then what I'll do is I'll take some flux here, put it on the inside there and around a little. And then slip it inside of this. Fire the torch up. Ooh, fire. Sweet. Let her cool down. And that'll be that. This works out really good if you're uh, making a front bumper and you've actually, your bumper wraps or your main hoop wraps around the front fenders and now all of a sudden you're too wide and you've got this huge gap. What you can do is actually take 
cut the front of your bumper here. I'll actually show you on a demonstration and on my bumper here. Let me back this up a little. Okay, so say in between your front fenders here, you've got this huge gap between here and your front fender. What you can do is cut your main hoop here, add a plug inside it, and realign it after you take out, say, a quarter inch or however much your gap is here to tighten up the tolerances. And, uh, yeah, there's tons of tip, uh, tips and tricks. Just uh, as you go along, you'll find out. All I can say is just uh, keep practicing, and um, next thing you know, you'll... Uh, You'll find little tips and tricks of your own that uh, will help you uh, go along making stuff. So, let's take a quick bullet this year. And there you go. It's flush all the way around. So yeah, like I say, all I can say is uh, it looks easy. It is easy. Just uh, keep practicing it, and you'll find your own little uh, your own little tips and tricks as you uh, go along. So yeah, hopefully this uh, helps you guys out, and uh, good luck on your projects.